So today I am interviewing the CEO of Uncloak, our very first ICO interview, and it starts now. Welcome YouTube to Altcoin Picks. As I said earlier today, we are doing our very first ICO interview. <laughs> I am excited to introduce the CEO of Uncloak, but before we do, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Also, jump into our Discord, check out our Twitter, join our Facebook. All the links are available in the description below, and let's get started. Welcome, Teo. So can you tell us who you are and what is Uncloak? Hi, yes, my name's Tyler Dodd. I'm CEO and founder of Uncloak. Uh, Uncloak is a cybersecurity solution designed not just for large businesses, but also for small businesses. And our aim is to provide a virtual cybersecurity expert that can be used for businesses to help them to protect their network and also tell them about the new cybersecurity threats that are coming up and always keep them abreast so they can make sure they continue to run their business without being hacked. Awesome, awesome. So what is the name of your token and does the token solve a real world business problem? Absolutely. So the token really gives you skin in the game. It's, it's called a UNC token. Um, it's actually run on Ethereum. So the to token not only can be purchased from a crypto exchange, but it will also be able to be purchased with fiat directly from our website, which will also pull the, the tokens from a crypto exchange itself. So the aim of the token is that it's a utility token that allows a business to be able to um, have access like software as a service, for example. So it's almost like a rental service where the, a client can sign up to our platform, the Uncloak platform, and literally have f access to a number of cyber solu security solutions under one roof. So we have a very clear ecosystem. So ha by holding the, the token itself, it's not just for trading, but it actually allows you to have access to all these suite of services that we have within Uncloak itself. Awesome. Okay, so what is the problem that Uncloak is solving and how are they doing it? Yeah, so one of the issues that we find in, in cybersecurity, and, and cybersecurity is the world's largest infrastructure problem in regards to hacking attempts. For example, in last year um, to this year, there has been an exponential increase of number of cybersecurity attacks, currently looking at 4.1 billion attacks even this year, and we're only literally in, into month six of obviously in June. Um, but really, at the end of the day, what we find, you know, I've been running cybersecurity firms for the last 20 years, and I've realized that every time we'll go to a client to do an, a particular security audit for a client in terms of looking at their computers and infrastructure and hardware, and then producing a report, that report would be, be only be good for the time that we actually produce the report. So we found, we got to a situation where it was great, we were getting paid a lot of money from the client, but then we'll walk away from the client, and I was like, why is a client in a situation where the next day a new vulnerability, a vulnerability means a weakness in your system, has been discovered, for example, out on the internet, which could cause issues for that client? And so we said, okay, right, I, I would like to see if there's anything we can do to, to help resolve this issue. And this is an issue that all cybersecurity firms across the world face. So it's great for the consultant that's trying to make money yeah. because they can always get pulled back by the company. But we want to be in a situation where we could provide a literally an ecosystem or suite of services that would always be like, like you having your own personal cybersecurity expert working with you without all the cost that is associated with a cybersecurity expert. And so the aim and the problem that we're the problem that we're trying to solve is make sure that a business, no matter what size it is, has access to a cybersecurity expert at the tap of its finger. And that's what Uncloak solves. Uncloak solves a problem of, of providing con constant 24 by 7 cybersecurity surveillance coverage to make sure that your systems, you always have an understanding of exactly where your systems are, what weaknesses are, and how you go about resolving the weaknesses in your system. And that's basically the problem that we're solving. Because uh, just to add, I mean, we, we've found that um, most of the large businesses, for example, businesses that have over a thousand members of staff, they approach cybersecurity from a government standpoint. So they're more concerned about Sarbanes-Oxley, FCA compliance, you know, SEC compliance, MIFID, and all these wonderful terms. But the smaller businesses, and these as small businesses is defined as a business between one to 250 members of staff, that cybersecurity, unfortunately, is usually out of their budget. Yeah. 
-hmm. And not only is it out of their budget, it's out of their expertise. And there is Cisco recently reported that there's over a million uh, jobs that are currently unfilled for cybersecurity experts. And so there is an absolute shortage for cybersecurity experts. And we really want to solve that problem of making sure that no matter what size your business is, you can have someone who is able to help you out with your cybersecurity coverage. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I work in the IT world and I know security is number one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So who thought of the idea and how long has it been testing or have you guys been working on the idea? Yeah. So, so literally it's been over the last 12 months really that we've been working since beginning of 2017. Um, As mentioned, I've been running an IT security firm for over 20 years in the UK. We service over 35 clients with one member of staff up to uh, a client that's got over 70,000 members of staff. And so we've had to deal with many different flavors of clients and infrastructure. And so, you know, I've been, I've always wanted to have a product. I've always wanted to release something that would allow, you know, a business to be able to take on a a solution and pay for this service, then have access to cybersecurity where we can't potentially provide that access and coverage around the world. So by having a product and a solution that we can roll out across the world, it just made absolute sense. Yeah. And um, and that's basically where it came from. It came from the idea of providing this, you know, 24 by 7 constant surveillance and awareness for the end client to be able to say, oh, wow, I know what is what I need to fix in my system today to make sure I'm secure tomorrow so I don't get hacked by someone out on the Internet, for example. Yeah. Is your token an ERC-20 token? And can you elaborate on the utility slash use cases of your token, the benefits of using your token and what that might actually look like? Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. So we, it's absolutely very much a, a pure utility token. It's not security. The whole aim of the token, it gives you access to the uncloaked platform to perform your cybersecurity scans and work out exactly what's happening in your business. Uh, the, those tokens are also used to pay for the bug bounty environment because we have a bug bounty where we have a bunch of ethical hackers that are completely isolated away from your infra- from a company's infrastructure that are looking for new vulnerabilities. And it also helps to pay for our rent on the EOS platform that allows us to use the artificial intelligence engine that is able to go out into the internet and t- and look for new threats and vulnerabilities before they've even been recognized within the press. And so the aim of our token really is that not only can it be purchased on a, on a crypto exchange, for example, but the token can also be purchased directly from the, our platform itself. Mm-hmm. And that token, for example, that, that would then mean that a client could come to our website without having, obviously, a crypto account, because not everyone's got a crypto account, yeah. or my ETH wallet, or Mist, or Parity, but can actually visit our website with normal fiat, or debit card, or credit card, and purchase these tokens, which will then be used for, as a software, as a service model on our system. And then that will allow that client then to get access to all these services. Okay. Um, and basically, that's, that's the elements of our token. Okay, and you said it's an e, it's an EOS that not an ERC twenty. No, yeah. So 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 the UNC token is an ERC twenty token. Okay. In other words, it's, it's what's it's externally tradable. We do we are using an EOS platform, okay. and we use and we should definitely go into in regards to why we use EOS and the blockchain and what have you. But um, in regards to what's externally tradable and a token that can be transformed from one person to another person, mm-hmm. that is a UNC token itself, which is on Ethereum. Okay, awesome. So do you guys currently have a minimal viable product like MVP? If so, is it an alpha, beta, or live? Yeah, so funny enough, so we have, we have you know, if it's, I'll call it a demo slash MVP, and this is actually kind of being used by quite a few thousand people at the moment that I've been using it. So we have a website, https colon forward slash forward slash demo dot io, and each you can visit that website. You can put an email address in there. Uh, please don't use a Gmail address because <laughs> if we get hundreds of people using Gmail addresses and scanning, we will actually get in trouble with Google. So mm-hmm. if you have a corporate email address, you can put that corporate email address into the system. It will register you. And in the background, the demo platform will be going out onto the Internet, finding out all the records like your website address, your email address, and find out what assets it can find out about. And then when you come back to the website, it will actually give you the ability to scan that particular part of your infrastructure and tell you what weaknesses you've got and it will easily tell you how to remediate those issues. And if you can't remediate them, um, when we actually finish the application, you'll be able to press a button and you can get access and support from a channel partner. 
but right now on the demo platform you can actually perform real life scans and we've had quite a few reviewers where some of the reviewers have actually found issues on their own websites which has been quite interesting and quite nice. amusing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah absolutely so, you know please feel free to uh, use that and basically test the quality of your your security on, on the public internet Awesome. So what is your team's background and experience, such as your core team, your developers, et cetera? And are they reachable slash transparent? I know some teams really hide <laughs> who their team is, actually. And then how many developers do you have working on the project full time? Right. So uh, absolutely. So, I mean, my guys, you can they're all contactable. We've got some great people in the team. Awesome. Um, so, for example, we've got Brendan Sturm, who's based out in, in the U.S. He's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, for us, he's a person that's designed the whole smart contract and the crowd sale and everything else. And he's in a, a Java, a great Java developer himself. Uh, then we have Dean Jackson, who's a full stack developer based in the UK. We sit next to each other. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked with him for many years, and he's he's had an element. Um, then we've got also got access to to Atif Kolkar. We've got ac access to Jay Chung. Jay Chung is an absolutely amazing MVP. He's one of the main architects in hong kong for eos oh, wow. uh, and he's basically one of our members in our team so he's been responsible for a lot of the eos development and giving us access to the eos, EOS community as well um so we basically are we on a day-to-day -day basis we have access to to five full-time software developers that are top of their game understand this have been working for companies that are multinationals um that have been making billions and billions of dollars and you know having these guys actually working with us in their team has been a real find for us and coupled with that we have Asad Mahmood um Asad Mahmood is an amazing find um we basically recently won the Ian Bellina hot pitch competition in London yeah. um which was pretty amazing and you know we went from um, zero to suppose hero or halfway hero we can <laughs> still do more more um so with more uh, subscribers yeah. but um what happened it was amazing the overnight success that we, you know once we won the pitch competition against 14 other companies um in Bellina, you know loved our project he's more of an infrastructure man himself yeah um and, and but he said look i've got the, my business partner that i've known for since george washington university we went to ibm together you know chat to this guy he's part of my 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 crypto money team have a chat with him and so we acid mahmoud has come on he's an ibm watson ibm watson is probably the highest department you can get in ibm with regards to research an absolute ai and blockchain genius been working on graphene which is even before the eos what we, we know about now um he's been basically working on eos for a very long period of time and distributed ledger and hyper ledger so having him to really help steer the ai and give us, you know, literally an amazing amount of experience has been absolutely paramount. Um, couple myself, obviously, I've got 20 years background in cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, my background, funny enough, I started computers when I was nine years of age. I used to write, you know, write games for Commodore 64. Yeah. Um, at age of 16 um, is when I got in trouble because um, I got into hacking. <laughs> and from hacking, I started working with a top four consultancy in the UK. Oh. And we helped establish the world's UK's first um, ethical hacking department in the UK and so my job was there was breaking into bank systems and what have you then from there I went to Grant Fulton where I worked with um, Professor Amy Tall who headed up the forensic accounting department and my job was to find uh, records that had been falsified by accountants and stuff like that so all this funny stuff <laughs> I've been involved with so um, quite quite a checker pass there um, but literally the, the people that I work with, you know, that everyone's like family. So mm -hmm. we, we know each other very, very well. No one's like not inaccessible. Everyone's accessible. You can, you know, click on any of the links and you can see people's LinkedIn profiles. And, yeah, yeah, I saw that. And it, it's all, should we all be pointing back to Uncloak? But um, we've got a great team and, you know, and we've got access to some great resources as well. So obviously we want to build a team out once we start reaching, you know, getting very close to our hard cap and what have you. Awesome. Okay, so next question. Has any of your team members slash advisors had any past business experience or successes in particular um, within this industry? And I guess you kind of talked about that, but which one are you seeking to disrupt or are you trying to disrupt any other industries except for the security portion? Um, well, that's no, funny. It's a great question. Um, so in terms of team members and advisors, we've got Nick Banks, for example, who was the basically managing director for Europe, Middle East and Africa mm -hmm. for WatchGuard, which is one of the top 10 firewall applications around. 
Um, we've had Mark Kreitzman, who was instrumental in OpenDNS. And if you know, OpenDNS is what basically powers Google's search engine. Um, so he was one of the guys who was responsible for the, the DNS part of it in regards to that bit, which got sold off to Google. Nice. Um, and Master Mike Kreitzman has been brilliant. Um, obviously, having Asad Mahmood, who's obviously amazing amount of experience working within IBM and IBM Watson team. So, you know, working with these real heavyweights in our team has been absolutely fundamental. And obviously, we've got guys like um, Phil Jackson, who heads up, you know, security lead at Capital, and obviously an extremely large business. Uh, and he's, he's responsible for a lot of the documents that come out on um, f around OWA SP, which is to do with website security and things like that. But really for us, in terms of disruption, we see ourselves as an ecosystem first and foremost, because um, from a vulnerability scanner point, um, we are looking at obviously taking on the likes of Tenable IL and Qualsys and some of these guys out there. From an AI perspective, you've got companies like Dart Trace and what have you. Um, and with the bug bounty, you have companies like HackerOne and, and um, Bug Crowd in the US. And so really in the day, we're the only company that we know of, not just in the actual, on the blockchain space, but definitely within the commercial world mm -hmm. that is combining all these three worlds together. So we have a really unique space that we have. And because companies and individuals and organizations are looking for one-stop solutions, they don't want to be like installing 20, you know, like for example, you've got a software background, you know, you've got one ID, which is designed for one application, and then you have another application, you know, and it's just, there's just too much informa information overload. What people want yeah. is they want a single pane of glass where, and they can make executive decision very, very quickly because the information that you have is succinct, straight to the point, easy to understand. And this is what companies need in security applications. We don't need any more security key applications that are run by security consultants. Yeah. We need applications that are designed to, to allow you to make a proper business decision. And this is what Uncloak does. So um, in regards to us, we, we see ourselves as a disruptor. We, we definitely don't see any other competitors in our space. Oftentimes people talk about Polyswarm or, or Hacken or a Sentinel protocol, but these guys are completely in a different space to us. Mm -hmm. And if we, if, if we be really honest, um, blockchain is still at less than 1% of any form of infrastructure by far. Yeah. You know, our, our, our aim is to concentrate on 99% plus infrastructure that is commonly available, your Windows machines, your Linux, your Solaris, your firewalls, Junipers, net screens. Um, net screens an old, old, old system, <laughs> yeah. but like your watch guards, your Fortinet. And, you know, these are the type of systems that we're looking about finding weaknesses in these systems, which are currently being used as opposed to just, just looking at stuff on the blockchain which we cover as well anyway um and that's basically where we position so we are literally a full market solution and we know we're in a completely unique space and it's really important for us to get as critical mass as quickly as possible mm -hmm. in the right way through a very nice channel model awesome so this kind of leads into the next question so who do you consider your main competition and what makes you stand out over them um for funny enough i mean in terms of our main competition i mean this is uh, quite an uh, a uh, um, a strange answer but our main competition is time <laughs> itself yeah. so because because for example back in the day you know when you had an, a software application and you launched it you had this first mover advantage where you're the first one in the marketplace you can create some great profits because no one else is doing what you do so yeah. for us i think one of the, the biggest competitors that we have is time because we need to make sure that the world that we're living in right now if you launch an application you can get 10 copycats within a period of you know a year or so yeah and so 100%. for us we need to make sure we hit the ground running extremely hard for a channel model where we can sell sell into our channel who are then selling around the world as quick as possible so time is our biggest competitor by far but you know to come back to real world as well um there's companies where i think from perception wise people are looking at the the poly swarms and the and the sentinel protocol because i think they've had definitely had more market exposure in mm -hmm. regards to marketing than we have in Uncloak. Um, but in regards to, we don't see them as competition because they, they some of these solutions, like for example, Polyswarm, they're more of an antivirus house. Yeah. We're not about antivirus. And anyone who knows security knows that security is, you shouldn't stop security when it just hits your network. You should be thinking about prevention is better than cure. You should be finding out what issues are existing there and then sorting your systems out before these issues even get to your system like an antivirus solution. And when you've got companies like Sentinel Protocol, these guys are really more concentrating on cryptocurrency in regards to protection around cryptocurrency. 
And that's still a very, very small market. It's growing, but it's still an extremely small market. And even though we will look at contracts like smart contracts and look for weaknesses, but um, you know, our main focus is, look, there's so many businesses out there, millions and millions of businesses in the world that just do not have any cover and coverage and they don't know where to go and look for. And they've got antivirus and they're like, okay, right, well, antivirus is not strong enough. And I can't afford a security consultant, which is a large majority of businesses that are out there. Yeah. Our solution, this is where we see ourselves in the marketplace. Awesome. Okay, so something I know everybody's wanting to know, what is your hard cap and why did you decide this amount? Yeah, so our hard cap is $21 million and, and, um, and that's not taking consideration bonus tokens. So obviously if we gave the highest bonus for our, to, for our tokens, we'd probably be close to around about 16 to $17 million anyway. But it's a $21 million hard cap. And the reason why we're going for $21 million is that, um, as mentioned before, we really need to make sure that we hit the market as extremely hard and as quick as possible. We can't just create an, a great application but don't have any distribution for it. So literally, as soon as we literally have our application ready to go, in the background, we're going to be having to spend tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions on creating up our channel distribution model, which will allow us to get our application all around the globe and to make sure that it's, it's that anyone who wants to sell our application or anyone wants to use it, that we have the staff that are able to do that, we have the awareness, we have the hackathons and all these wonderful things that are needed in order to make an application successful. And so the reason why we've gone for a $21 million hard cap um, after review with our experts and what have you is definitely is where it will allow us to have all the market in clout, the access to build up the channel market as quickly as possible and make sure we can deliver the, the best application that we possibly can foresee first time round because we only get one chance at this. Yeah. So you mentioned bonus bonuses that people can get. What is how is that working? Yeah. So for example, we have you know private sale with with a private sale. There is bonus structure up to forty uh, percent okay. bonus structure. Obviously, dependent on the size. There is obviously a minimum entry level of two hundred thousand dollars if you want to participate in the bonus structure. Um, with investment period there, obviously on the tokens, and yeah. we combine the, the bonus tokens in with the regular tokens. So as we distribute the tokens out, we're not just waiting until the end where bonus tokens are distributed on a lockup period. The tokens are all embedded together at the same time, which is great for the private sale guys. For the pre-sale guys, we have a maximum and we have a, do have a tiered structured in our system. So, um, but we have a maximum 30% that you can actually receive as a pre-sale mm -hmm. with a min maximum amount of $100,000. Um, on our smart contract, everything is limited. So you can't go $100,000 and and be like some of these guys that try and put the same amount in 10 times and yeah. what have you. Um, so that's completely locked out on the smart contract. But the way it's, way it's tiered as well, which makes it attractive, obviously, for the private sale guys is that, and, it really, and the more you put in, you, the more money you put in, and obviously the more investment you put into the business contribution, you put into Uncloak, it's obviously tailored for them, for that the, there's a tier structure. So for example, you, you won't get 30%, you know, by putting in $10,000, you'll have to, be very close to hundred thousand dollars to really get that thirty yeah, percent bonus structure. Sense. Absolutely, and that's how we're doing it. So it gives everyone the best ability. And the good thing about the pre-sale, for example, you can put a minimum of hundred dollars in, which gives you that ability almost to reserve that allocation in that at that space, which is which is really really great. We believe. Okay, so when is the token sale, and can people still whitelist if they are able to? How long do they have? And then are U.S. investors able to join the token sale? Okay, great. So our whitelist is still open and it will be open all the way through to the first week of our main ICO, which is on the 26th of June. Okay. And the main ICO runs into the 3rd of July. Okay. Um, we, um, so that's basically our, our whitelist scenario there. In regards to uh, US credit investors, um, we would have to handle it on a case by case basis because you know SEC is just yeah. <laughs> changing the goalposts. Yeah. But you know we will handle SEC. We will handle uh, you know US credit investors on a case by case basis. Um, make sure that you know our lawyers are happy to to deal with that. But we certainly wouldn't have a problem dealing with a US accredited investor. Um, however, I must say obviously we have a quite a stringent KYC compliance uh, policy, which we have in our system, which is tied to our smart contract. Okay. And one of the things that we do do is that as we're already in, in various advanced stages with three of the top 10 
uh, crypto exchanges, um, we have to be very careful about what compliance, what our compliance requirements are, and legal opinion on our token, and all this, all this wonderful stuff. Yeah. Um, but the token sale is completely open. Um, we still have a private sale. We're clo- you know, we're completely oversubscribed at the moment. Private sale, so we're just waiting for some of these commitments to come through. Um, and we're completely oversubscribed in regards to pledges, but obviously the pledges have to turn into cold hard cash yeah. um, on on the actual main pre-sale side. But you know, it's, it's looking very exciting, and we're very excited about where we are right now. I think we're in a very good, strong place in regards to where we are, especially in this difficult market. Up, you know, yeah. we're definitely I can believe in a good to be in a good space. Okay, so can you give us a little bit more details on the token sales? So how many tokens are being available? Um, how much are you expecting in circulation and then what's the total supply and then also how much is your team being allocated and what's the lock up period for that? Yeah. So in regards to, we are given 50% of, in regards to tokenomics, we're given 50% of all tokens in distribution away in a token sale itself. Okay. Um, off that we have um, a total allocation of 4.2 billion tokens. The reason why we have so much tokens, um, which are, effectively equates to a business that is valuing itself at $42 million. But we're giving $21 million off all the tokens in circulation during the, the token sale itself. The reason why we have so much tokens in regards to 4.2 billion tokens is the fact that we are going for a mass market solution and we need to make sure there's enough liquidity and tokens in the marketplace for people not just to buy from exchange and the tokens are valued at 0.01 cents anyway. Okay. Um, so if someone wants to buy an exchange, obviously people can buy off exchange, investors can buy off exchange, but then also our customers, our retail customers and end users and channel partners can also purchase directly from our website. So we need to make sure we have enough tokens available for them to get their hands on. Um, in regards to lockup periods, um, the, 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 the founders we have, um, there is, uh, we currently ran about 12% of total tokens are allocated for the team itself. Okay. Um, we have 15% on the white paper, but literally it's looking at 12% at the moment in terms of the size of the team because our team is a lot smaller than we anticipated. Okay. So we're close, a lot closer to 12%, but it's 15% on our white paper. Uh, coupled with the fact we also, um, all the fa- the main founders like myself and, and my other partner, um, we have an 18-month period um, or lockup period, so we can't touch anything for 18 months. Yeah, that's good. Um, which, we, which we believe is fair because, you know, we just want to make sure it isn't for us just raising money for the ICO and then going to the Bahamas and having a great yeah. time. You know, we want to, we, we know there's a real world solution that we want to fix. And if we take in consideration for every white hat or ethical person, hacker that is doing it legitimately, there's another 10 other guys out there that are on the internet that aren't doing it legitimately. And so, you know, we can, we want to address that with our uncloaked solution. And so, we're, we're, in, we're in this to win it. It's a long-term scenario for us. We're not just here to make money and just run off. We really want to create an application that is going to make a difference in the world. Awesome. So then how much are you trying to raise in private seed, crowd sales, and then do you have any venture capital, sorry, do you have any venture capital backing? Yeah. Okay. Great question. Okay. So yes, we have, you know, one of our first partners that we had on there was Vimenti Capital based in the US and uh, run by a chap called Tan Tran. He's you know, it was great. He's come on board and he's basically um, really helped us to really get ourselves off the ground mm-hmm. in regards to funding and investment. Um, couple, so we also have, um, sorry, I didn't remember the other part of the question there. So it was the other part of the question, sorry. Uh, do you have any private seeds and then um, how much are you yeah, trying so to Yeah, so the allocation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. There we go. So we're on, on the private sales side of things, we're basically looking to raise, I think probably close to between 8 to $10 million in private sales side. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to give between eight to six million dollars for the pre-sale guys to make sure they have access to it. And the pre-sale guys, like I said, the entry point is extremely low for pre-sale. They can come in at a hundred dollars, which is almost like a main ICO yeah. figure. And 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 so really, in the day, we want to make sure it's advantageous for everybody. So that's basically where we stand. Okay. So then, where do you see your project by the end of the year, such as your roadmap, number of users, etc.? Absolutely. So, I mean, really, our, our aim is to make sure that we are, we're not just necessarily looking like just at end customers in, the, in at the end of this year in Q4. Um, so at Q4, we should be on main net. So the great thing, we've obviously been, our application is built in C, and obviously I know you're a software developer, but the great thing about running on EOS, EOS is more than a blockchain. It allows you to run applications within the blockchain. EOS in its infancy 
you if anyone who's used Stemit or BitShares, that's literally an early version of EOS, which was designed by Dan Larimer, an absolute genius mm -hmm. in the blockchain space, who created that in August 2016. And so, you know, by us running on that application within that space, it really it really allows us to almost have a massive decentralized computer with access to storage bandwidth and um, and computing power, you know, at a drop of a hat. Um, I've probably gone off on tan tangent a bit, um, but really where we see ourselves in regards, we want to make sure that by um, Q4, we are mainnet okay. on EOS mainnet. Um, and obviously we've got ears to the ground on that in regards to, as I mentioned before, Jay Chung, who's obviously one of the main EOS developers out in Hong Kong. So we've got ears to the ground on that. So we're definitely looking at Q4 for mainnet. And coupled with that, I, you know, what would be a good number? We are really concentrating on getting access to around about 25 global channel partners okay. um, by, by, by December. Um, so that will put us in a great position because once we train up the channel partners, they have access already to a set of incumbent clients, which they can sell to anyway. So it, it gives us the, 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 the greatest position in, for us to be able to get our application out there and install the right set of people that know what to do with our application. Awesome. So then our final question, what is the best way to get in touch with you or the team in case any of my viewers have any more questions? Yeah. So if, for example, if you would really like to register in, interest in like private sale, we have private sale at uncloak.io. We have a Telegram group, which is actually, we've got over 10,000 users in that, and that's growing daily, which is brilliant with a really nice set of community managers that you find. So you're running at 24 by 7 um, on, on our uncloak Telegram channel. So it's uncloak official. Uh, it's the name of the Telegram channel, but you can also type in Uncloak IO okay. in Telegram and it should pop up in there. Also, our website as well, https colon forward slash forward slash uncloak.io and all the information to literally all the web links that you might be concerned about from Twitter to Facebook to um, Stemit to Medium, all the posts are on there. So okay. please feel free to, to reach out that way. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Again, it's my first interview and it, it was fun. I enjoyed doing this with you. <laughs> no, listen, I, I appreciate your time, Gene. And I, and, um, I'll pronounce your name, not Gene or John. I need to be very sure I'm getting yeah. it. Pronouncing right. But um, I'm, it's great what you guys are doing at you know, Altcoin Picks. You know, we're really privileged to be you know, your first AMA interview. <laughs> yeah. We've got an exciting time ahead with Uncloak. Um, we'd love you to jump and, and join our journey. And, you know, please look at our site, see what we're up to and realize and you'll see very clearly why we're different and we and why we have a real, there will be a real demand for our application in the marketplace. Absolutely. Awesome. And as Ian always says to me, to the moon. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so that's our very first interview. It was with Uncloak, the CEO of Uncloak. It was awesome. We had a little bit of computer issues, but it ended up working out perfect. Thank you so much. Don't forget to let me know what you liked and you disliked about this format and come to our Discord, suggest whatever you want. I can try to get more interviews with more companies and that is definitely the, the goal. <laughs> Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.